hello. My plan for today is to inlay and finish this live edge slab that I got a few months ago at a sawmill in Wisconsin ran by a badass woman. Um, just a quick little background. I used to make wrapped wooden rings and a lot of my work was really intricate inlay designs. So um, I am familiar with inlaying with stone. If this is something that you want to do, it is very doable, it is very easy, and you're still gonna learn stuff along the way. So I would suggest practicing on smaller pieces before you do something like this. Say hi, Akila. This is my live edge slab here. When I first got this, I used some brad nails to nail in the bark so that when it dried, it dried to the wood. With that being said, it's still pretty vulnerable. Um, so I'm gonna take care of that today. And if you notice here in some of the knots, there are some cracks. There's, you know, a nice big crack here, a nice crack here. And it's in those places where I'm going to inlay some turquoise. So right now the wood is pretty rough and I want to keep it rough for now. I'm going to do all of the inlays, which means I need to crush that turquoise, set it in the cracks, and then drop in some CA glue. Once that stone is dried in there, then I'm gonna give it a good sand. This is how I crush my stone. Basically, you can find pipe fittings. This'll be kind of the bottom of the pipe fitting, screwing this on, and then having a mini one. It's kind of like a mortar and pestle. Probably gonna start with about half of these beads. So now I'm just gonna put the beads in the bottom of this thing. So I've got these beads in the bottom. Now we crush. Luckily, turquoise is pretty soft, so it doesn't take a whole lot. I just finished crushing some of this. I might need some more, but right now, that's pretty good. Basically, all I'm going to do now is put this turquoise and inlay it with some CA glue. Um, I would recommend using thin. I prefer thin. Sometimes I use medium. Uh, you'll never need thick. At least I never use thick. Alright, this is what I've decided to do so far. So I've got some inlaid in that bark. I did inlay the creases of each of these little knots included. Cool little knot there, I like that one. I'm just going to let this dry and probably do a few more coats of CA glue in those deep ridges with turquoise to make sure that it's really in there. Before I sand it all down, I'm also going to put some thin CA glue along the edge where all of my bark attaches to my wood and probably within the bark as well. This was a suggestion from my friend Kai. So Kai, thank you. I think it's gonna turn out great. All right, cool. See you later. Just finished up, you can probably see the uh, line of my mask. This is important to wear when you're working with CA glue for a while. So basically all of the inlays are done that I want. The next thing I'm going to do is actually work on the little storage space for where this table would be. I'm hoping to be done with it today. So that table is actually going to be stored right here so that I can slide it out and sit in this little chair that I'm gonna put right here so that I can work or drink my coffee or watch a show or whatever. On the bus and take a ride downtown Well I don't know about that But can you help me first to get these boxes down Well I don't know about that We have the whole day now So I want the table to slide in there but not have all of this room to like allow the back end to flip up and be unstable. I just bought some quarter inch plywood. So I'm actually just gonna cut off like 12 inches of one of the edges and then nail that in. And then I'll get a little bit of thicker plywood to do the bottom. It'll make kind of like a sheath for my table. I actually kind of want this. No, I want this one to the back. I'm using all of my scrap wood, so it doesn't look pretty, but who cares? And then we'll see if it fits. Yep, it's gonna fit beautifully. I'm not gonna push it all the way in because the bark is still pretty fragile because it's not finished yet, but it works. So you might be wondering why I'm doing it like this, but I'm gonna show you why. 
just not yet. Now that this is all dry, I'm just going to sand it really smooth and then start finishing it. And I'll show you the finish that I'm going to use once this is done. I moved it back here so it's out of the sun because I don't want to apply this stuff in the sun. I know that because it told me on the back and I had thought about doing a glaze, like a glaze coat, but I don't want it to be super heavy. I don't want it to be really thick and I don't want it to look like a bar top. So after looking through a lot of my options, I decided to go with this. So it's a water-based polyurethane. It's a crystal clear, it's a matte finish. And I'm applying it with this brush and I can reapply a coat every hour. So that is what I'm going to be working on today, shall we? Oh, this is a really nice brush. Nice. I'm gonna actually start over here. I'm going to try kind of working it into this wood a little bit. When your life's been put on hold for far too long. When the sorrow and So right now, this is the back of it and the front is dry, there's just a little bit of, you know, wetness in parts of the bark, but while that dries, I'm going to make some grooves in the back. With my Dremel, I'm just gonna use this little tip. All right, I have my two grooves done. I want to show you why I put those grooves in the bottom of my table. The rest of the table I did the exact same steps as I did for the top of it. So once I cut those grooves in the bottom, I just sanded everything smooth, covered it with a few layers of that water-based polyurethane, and that was it, the table was done. For the inlaid part of my table, I used a lot of large chunks of turquoise for the rougher ridges within the bark. For the parts of the inlay that were in the smaller cracks, or in the more detailed areas on the very top of the table, I used more of the powder. This was intentional because I wanted the edges to have texture and I wanted the top to be really smooth. It has been about a week and a half since the table is finished. Check this out. This table, this is near my bed, it will come out and I use this as a bedside table and I will be using it as a desk because I will be sitting right here. But this is my favorite function. The grooves that I put allow it to sit in the bottom of this door. I just cut out these panels and this is my finished table. I have used this table multiple times to make breakfast, make dinner, make my coffee in the mornings, to hold things while I work. I have absolutely loved having the option of bringing this table out and having a space outside right now i'm sitting under a huge cottonwood tree next to a reservoir and it's gorgeous also the fact that the table can sit into those little openings in the door make it much less likely that wind will pull the doors open and the table will fall prior to cutting the grooves that happened one time <laughs> i know that this isn't everybody this is so loud can you stop rustling your leaves for one moment I have loved having this function with my table. Being able to sit outside and have a large space to cook or to set things on has been really great, so I highly recommend it. If this type of table and inlay isn't your vibe, I at least hope that this can give you some ideas. And I do want to remind you that I got this live edge slab out of a scrap pile at a local sawmill. So, there are options out there to make or find something really beautiful for really cheap. It is so windy! <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed this short little video. Next week's video is going to be all about the walls in my van. I know I gave you a little sneak peek when I was showing you my table inside. Well, I am going to be done being on all electronics for a while this morning. I'm gonna walk to that water and enjoy it and maybe Akilah will want to go swimming. I will be back in a week with more progress, more information, and more updates. See ya. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. 
side by side our fears are done All the good times just begun 